Well, hello again. Yeah, this is now the end of day one. God, it goes quickly. Um, and we've just, I've just heard the last two speakers of the day, um, Alan Foster and Joanne Richards. Now, Alan Foster, I mean, I, I'm sorry to say, I found myself nodding off during his speech. Now, this is not because he's boring, and I, I've, I often said this. Um, it's because I, I, because I, maybe because I have trouble sleeping, and because I'm in this, I'm sitting down, and it's like, I'm start going like that, you know. And I'm, luckily, I chose a seat quite a long way back, so he couldn't see me. But now he was talking about he was, he was a guy who spoke at Exapol in 2010, and he did a kind of, he's attached to some kind of UFO-based sort of quasi-religion like the Raelians or the Theorist Society. I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what, but this time he was a lot more sort of practical. He talked about um, various UFO sightings, like um, the, this incident in Cyprus in 1966 when a, a UFO half a mile across hovered 168,000 feet above Cyprus. Um, you know, things like that. There was... Um, oh, it was... Uh, he also talked about um, the UFOs that miss our bases and things like this, because... Um, Captain Robert Salas has spoken about his own his own experience of that when he was actually a, a person who was on one of these bases. Um, hi, hi Dave, it's Dave there. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Um, so Captain Robert Salas spoke about this. Now they, you, you, these creatures and things seem to have some kind of interest in in um, nuclear facilities, nuclear power stations, nuclear weapons facilities. Um, now. I'm afraid, like I said, I missed a lot of the speech, unfortunately, you know, but it was like, um, he spoke about disappearing bees and these dead animals keep turning up. This very mysterious and very upsetting um, kind of nature that happens, you know, that keeps going on. Are you, I'm, I'm going to catch up with you guys no, we'll, down the... I'll get some time we'll, we'll, we'll wait for you to... All right, it won't be much longer. All right, mate, yeah, no worries. Um, reading out word for word one of those... Uh, hi, David. ...pamphlets that she has for three quid. That's what she did. Joe, oh, yeah. Reading out your notes that you made from. Basically, I'm doing the Herpan Moti report on this conference. Cause, oh, uh, I see. Yeah. Right. Can well, I show well, you to the Herpan Moti I viewers? Shut my mouth and let you do it's it. all right. Can I show you to the Herpan viewers? Can yeah. I show you? This is David Monker, and he's yeah. a friend of mine from Probe. Who yeah. I've heard of a few times, but I only met him yesterday, but I've sort of heard of him a few times, yeah. And, um, yeah. and uh, that's it. I've he's done a few talks here in Blackpool, but it's about 10 years since I did something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, no, okay. We'll see you later. Like, see you in a. Um, yeah, we'll be coming along to I'll be coming. I'll be coming. Um, weather spins or something. Yeah. I'll come and join. As soon as I've done this, I'm going to come and join you. Um, right. You can wait for me if you want, or you're going to go on ahead. Yeah, um, do that, yeah. So that was Alan Foster. Um, a lot of his stuff was very disturbing. He talked about the, the stuff to do with the Large Hadron Collider. I find very, very dodge, very, very upsetting. And the disappearing bees is something that particularly bothers me. You know. Um, but you know, like Win Keach, he talked about the crop circles and about their formation and and um, their meaning. Um, Win Keach showed a film of what he said was these creatures forming a crop circle. Right, where would, so, um, now then, um, Joanne Richards. Now, Joanne Richards is a lady I met in 2007 when she was here before. Um, and she did a speech which, um, actually you'd probably find hard to understand if you weren't aware of the bigger picture because, um, it was kind of like an episode of, of the whole situation with her husband. Now, she's a lady who, um, has a husband who is in prison. Now, he was jailed in 1982 for a murder that he didn't commit. Um, and basically he was, set, he was put in jail to shut him up, to discredit him and to keep him quiet. Um, he, uh, he's involved in what you might call extraterrestrial intelligence. Now, it's a huge subject, but basically he was part of this, of uh, an alien liaison and defense committee um, he was an, his father was a, um, an intelligent, a major intelligence official, and well, jo, the Joanne sort of related what you might call an episode of his life, what took place in 1961 when Mark, her husband Mark, was seven years old, and basically he was in England and he went to several locations in England where um, extraterrestrials were meeting with humans and different extraterrestrial races. Many she describes dozens of these extraterrestrial races. Now. Um, the people involved were not only um, Mark's father, who's this major intelligence operative, but also some very famous names, including James Callaghan, who was our Prime Minister between, I think, 19, 
75 and 79. Um, there was also Peter Euston off the actor, Ian Fleming. Now, now these, Ian Fleming, the, these names do come up again and again in esoteric subjects. Ian Fleming was an, himself an intelligence officer during World War II and is most famous for being an author because he wrote the James Bond novels, which is some of the most famous spy novels ever written. Um, now, it, it, what follows is a, basically that the family went from place to place across the country uh, meeting various creatures. And it culminated in a meeting in Exeter in what I forgot the actual date, but it was 1961, where there was a major at um, a place in Exeter in Dorset. Now, um, I've heard an awful lot about this area near Corfe Castle and places like that, um, where there's secret military installations to this day that are not marked on maps. Now, as far as Joanne goes, I mean, Joanne is a lady who is extremely sincere. I mean, she. When she speaks, she has trouble to control her emotions. Yes, she, she has to fight to stop weeping. Sometimes um, she's utterly devoted to her husband, who she adores, and um, she believes wholeheartedly in this mission. Now, um, there, I have some questions. For instance, where do the Illuminati fit all, into all this? Well, the Disclosure Project. How does this influence that? Because, of course, this is the Earth, the governments of the Earth dealing with these creatures. Now the governments of the earth, are, as you know, are you know, are, I believe, are Illuminati occupied. So where does that fit all into it? Um, this also this has, I mean, this work, this also has is very relevant to the disclosure project. Now I don't doubt, for, I actually don't doubt that that the basic story she's telling is true, because I've heard similar stories from other witnesses. Joanna herself is very sincere, like I said. See you, Penny. Uh, you know, it was, it was, but a big trouble was, you know, I mean, that the, the, what she related, this, this speech that she related was a very detailed um, rendition of this, um, of this experience that her husband had when he was seven years old. But unfortunately, unless you, you, you need to, to put it into the bigger context, you need to be aware of the bigger picture. And obviously some of the, in fact, a lot of the audience weren't aware of that. And um, I think she started to lose some of the audience at one point. Not me, because I know the bigger picture, but some of the others she did. And I think that, and unfortunately, some of the, some some people behind us started talking. Did you, did you see that? Yeah, they were laughing. They're some, they were talking. Some so I think some were poking fun at her, which is quite yeah. cruel. But even the ones that were just chatting amongst themselves, I mean, it's quite disturbing because they were they they started whispering, but then they started talking more and more loudly while Joanne was speaking. And I thought that's pretty rude, actually. You know. I mean, even if you even if you do find that a speaker is not quite gelling with you or not quite on your wavelength, you know, you don't chatter away to interrupt them. Um, anyway, um, one thing that's interesting about Joanne, I mean, I I could for the first time in a couple of years, I, I actually saw her aura. Now, I, I Joanne has a visible aura. I'm, I'm, I don't often see people's auras, but I mean, I can actually see her aura. I've it's, um, never seen anybody's aura. No, it's, it's something that very rarely happens to me. But I, she did see her aura. She has a pale yellow aura, which is. Um, it's just like I could see it at certain times during her speech. Now, that's not often I can see that, and I did see it. I don't know. I'll have to ask. I, I might. T I should tell her really. I'll probably tell. I'll tell her when I see her later. They do aura reading. I might go to them tomorrow. Yeah. Um. Is that the curly and photography lady? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I might have a word with Joe, and I'll tell her. But I could. This is the first time I've actually managed to see somebody's aura in several years. But I can occasionally see it. I hope you can see mine. I'd love to know what colour that is. But there's some people who can see the peoples all the time. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I just see people and that's it. Yeah. I don't read their thoughts. It annoys me because John Gurin says he can read other people's thoughts and I find that embarrassing if pe other people can read my thoughts. No, I mean, this is, this is our, our, our mind is the last bastion of our freedom. This is why Orwell in George Orwell's 1984, they have this thing called thought crime. They want to control the thoughts of the population as well as their words through newspeak and their actions through Room 101 and things like that. So yeah, I mean, any attempt at thought control I think is very dangerous. And I think that people, I think, you know, people are quite psychically aware and if they feel that someone is reading, thinking about them and they, it's a misunderstanding, then they can get powerful by using magic against them. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to have to, I've only got 11 minutes on the battery. Um, I'll see you later, we'll catch up later. We're going to go sky watching tonight. Take care. Bye-bye.